Okay, the mini room and board, and this might be good for you guys to pay attention to. The mini room and board expense per year at a four year college, and this is all updated. This is just room and board, is 9,126. This is the population mean of all the four year colleges that they say yes. You randomly select nine four year colleges. This is your sample. Okay. What is the probability that the mean room and board, this works like we always did, probability that the mean room and board, there's your X, is less than $9,400. You have to assume that the room and board expenses are normally distributed. They have to tell us this because our sample size is less than 30. If our sample size is more than 30, we remember from that graph that it approximates a normal curve. Less than 30, they have to tell us that it approximates a normal curve. And we get a standard deviation here of 1,500. Now, the one thing that's going to change when we use your sample is your sample standard deviation. The mean is going to stay the same. The standard deviation for your sample is going to take the population standard deviation, which is 1,500, divided by the square root of n, which is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So 1,500 divided by 3 is 500. This is the new piece of information that we are working with. Yes? Did I choose it? No, it's from here. 9126. It's from our problem. The population mean is the sample mean. It's the standard deviation that is going to change. So it's going to take your curve with 9126 in the middle and spread out 1500, 1500, 1500. It's going to now be spread out 500. It's going to force it to go like this. It's going to push it closer to the mean. We, however, are going to sketch your sample curve because it would be really hard to put the both of these onto one. So we're going to sketch your sample curve. This is your 9126. One, two, three. The rest works exactly the same. So we're going to add 500. And we're going to keep adding 500. And we're going to subtract 500. Somewhere around there. So we want to know what is the probability that it will be less than 9,400. 9,400 is here, and we want the area to the left. So according to our graph, it should be less than 50% or more than 50%. More, more than 50%. Here's my 50% halfway, and I'm more. It should be like what? 60. Uh, 60, 70, yeah. Probably because this right here in this section is about 34, so we don't know exactly how far we're in there. Maybe about half of that, so another 15, 20 onto that. To get a good guess to it. Now, you use the same exact z score formula. The only difference is your standard deviation. We're just going to take your standard deviation of, of the population, but we already did this one. We know that this standard deviation was 500, so we're going to say. 9,400 minus the mean divided by 500. And we're going to come out with your z-score. And when you come out with your z-score, it should match this graph. 0.55. And does that sound reasonable? We're between the 0 and the 1. 0.55. We do the same thing for the rest of the way. We look up on your chart, 0.55 z-score, we take the area to the left, because we want it less than. So we find your area, and it's 0.7088. So it's about a 71% chance that the sample that we'll choose from that group of samples has a mean, has a mean room and board less than 9,400.
your body out there. That's pretty much okay. <laughs> we didn't know if it was a prank or a curtain. <laughs> so, are we okay with this? Do you see the difference? The only difference is, Damani, what, what don't you say? Okay, the rest of the problem works exactly the same as we've been doing it. If it's less than, it's area to the left. If it's greater yeah, I, than, I the whole thing is this piece right here. We are now using samples. We're not using a population. We're, we're collecting, remember that video we watched and he kept dropping in his samples and then yeah, taking the, the mean, the yep, with the dots. He kept taking the mean of all the sample means. He took all the samples, took their means, then he took the mean of all the sample means. That mean comes out to be the same as your population. However, the standard deviation comes out to be smaller. And we have a formula for that, which is the standard deviation over the square root of n. Aaron? So basically, what you do is you're the area of the sample? The area from the sample standard deviation. We're using the sample standard deviation, and not the population. The rest of it works exactly the same. So you Yep. As soon as you see the word sample out there, oh. that's all we're doing. I think the next problem will show you the difference. Let's do the next problem, and this will kind of make it a little clearer. Here's a good one. Here's a good problem to do. Example 6. This is on page 268. Okay. This is a good one because, look, it takes a population and compares it to the sample. This one says A randomly selected undergraduate. This one says 25. This is your sample. So this is going to show us the difference between a population and a sample. Okay? And this is how we work this. So, the average credit card debt carried by undergraduates is normally distributed. They told us that it represents a normal distribution with the means, pull out your information, and a standard deviation of 1120. They obviously never met my daughter when she was an undergraduate. Okay. What is the probability that a randomly selected undergraduate from the population who is a credit card holder will have a credit card balance less than $2,700? Okay, from the population. This is what we've always done up to this unit. So we say, okay, make me a graph. Here's my mean. Here's my three standard deviations. I like the chart. I think the graph is helpful, and the graph will help you see the difference between your sample and your population. So I don't think I'll be adding these in my head too easily. So let's just keep adding their standard deviation of 1120 all the way up. Wait, this, one this one's asking for a population first. Uh, like we always used to do it. And then look what it's going to do, Damani. Then it's going to take the same information and say, what if I took samples of 25 from this group of population? And I look at that mean for all those means. Would it make a difference if I used a sample rather than a person? So let's see what happens. Uh, 2700 is way down on the bottom, so let's work our way backwards. 2, oh, flat, great. So we're here. 2700 is going to fall in here somewhere and be less than that. Is the probability going to be less than 50 or more than 50? Less. Less. So we say, okay, z score. Regular z score formula. Take the x value minus the mean, and this is what's giving you the negative, and yes, we are in the negative side, divided by the standard deviation. Right? This is how we did it in the past all the time. So we come out with a z-score 
of negative 0.42. And does our d squared truly come between the zero and the negative one? Mm -hmm. We look up on the chart, negative 0.42, and we get an area of 0.3372. So what's the probability that you randomly select A, undergraduate, one person, and that person's credit card is less than 2700 about 34% approximately, right? Now, instead of taking a population, because it's difficult to pick one person and have it represent every undergraduate, every undergraduate, say you get that person that has a credit card balance of zero because they don't like to keep a credit card. Say you get that person that maxed out at their 6,000. You're, you're randomly selecting one person out of all your college undergraduates. That's to say, is that person the best representation? Maybe not. So instead, you keep taking samples of 25 from this population. You calculate their mean. You throw them back. You take another 25 from that big population. You calculate their mean. You throw them back. You keep doing it a number of times. On his video, we did it 10,000 times. Then you take the mean of all those means, and then you take a sample of 25 and compare it, That's not a circle. All the means, what, what, what do they all mean? They mean, it, instead of taking every person, and like, yeah, okay, no, say this is my population, let's do it in our classroom. This is my population. I ask everybody what their credit card balance is. Everybody tells me their credit card balance. We add them all together. We divide by 24. We get a population mean. We put it in our L1. We get a population standard deviation. Now, instead of asking one person and comparing them, I'm going to say, okay, let me take samples of five each time. Samples of five, samples of five, samples of five. And I take all their means and I average them into one. Or why would you need all their means? Because it makes it more realistic because you, if you think about it in your population, are you better off taking one person? Or are you better off taking a group to represent your population? If I pick just you and you've maxed out your credit card to $8,000, you had a credit card to $8,000 that your folks gave you when you went to college. And they said, here, use this when you need it. And you said, oh, yeah, party time. Yeah. And $8,000 you maxed out. Look at Julia. Julia says, I pay all my bills every month. I have a zero balance on my card. Look at the disparity between two people. What if I pick you to represent the population? What if I pick Julia to represent the population? So, but now, if I took you and Julia and two other people and I average work together, wouldn't I be getting a more realistic look at this? Rather than get a high and a low, I'll so average them out. So you're just grouping them. I'm grouping them. I'm looking at a group. But if you group them, won't you just get the population average? No, aren't I getting it? Well, I'm getting closer to your population average, but what it's doing is bringing your standard deviation closer to that mean. That's exactly what it's doing. It's bringing that closer to that mean and exactly what you saw. Now, here, that says mm -hmm. I have a sample of 25. Let's just get through this last one, guys. So the only thing that's going to change, I'm going to keep the same mean. But my standard deviation says, take your standard deviation, divide it by the square root of how many are in your sample. The square root of 25 is 5. So I take a look at that. Uh, it's not 48? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Now, look at how much smaller your standard deviation is. From 1120 to 48. So what did it do? It pushed it closer to the mean. If I put it on here, it would be much, much closer to my mean. And that's exactly what we wanted it to do. Okay. It's not 48, it's 224. It's 124? 224. 224, thank you. I'm such a believing person. Yeah, sorry. But we still have the same effect, that's okay. We still have the same effect on this. We still are pushing it closer and closer to your mean. So now, let's redo this, because as for us, it's very hard to do two on one. So if we take the same one, and I'm only gonna go to the, ne to the negative, because I only need to be 2,700. 
So let's just pop this down to the negative. Let's take away 224. So this is 2949 and 2725. How much is 2700 yet? And 2501. So 2700 is over here somewhere. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. So let's take a look at your sample work. And Somewhere between, be oh, tw oh, sorry, 2,700 is less than the two. Well, yeah, that's like, that's like Thank you for catching me, Michael. It's down here somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm closer to the mean. My other scores are falling closer to the mean. So my z-score formula is exactly the same. Only thing is, my standard deviation has changed. So we have the same numerator over my new denominator of 224. And your z-score will come out to be negative 2.11, right? And we look up the area to the left, and your area is small. Because this is on the left-hand side of it. If it was on the right-hand side of it, you're going to have a greater area. But it's because it's on the left-hand side of it, you have the less people over there. Yes. So there's two answers. One population, one sample. 224 is just the standard deviation. That is the change. Look, that is the only thing that changed right here. Everything else works the same. And you found your z-score, and you looked up your area to the left. Right. Guys, I'm giving you a little homework assignment. Oh, 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 oh